I greet and welcome all of you, also those who are particip participating in this Mass through streaming on this glorious feast of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I greet you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In order that we might celebrate humbly and worthily and joyfully the holy mysteries, let us consider our faults and failings and ask God for pardon and for peace. I confess, Lord Almighty, Almighty God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, may you forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Lord of, mercy. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses went and told the people all the commands of the Lord and all the ordinances. In answer, all the people said with one voice, we will observe all the commands that the Lord has decreed. Moses put all the commands of the Lord into writing and early next morning he built an altar at the foot of the mountain with 12 standing stones for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then he directed certain young Israelites to offer holocausts and to immolate bullocks to the Lord as, as communion sacrifices. Half of the blood Moses took up and put into basins, the other half he cast on the altar. And taking the book of the covenant, he read it to the listening people and they said, we will observe all the Lord has decreed, we will obey. Then Moses took the blood and cast it towards the people. This he said, is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you containing all these rules. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is the cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the name of the Lord. How 
how precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Now Christ has come as the high priest of all the blessings which were to come. He has passed through the greater, the more perfect tent, which is better than the one made by men's hands because it is not of this created order. And he has entered the sanctuary once and for all, taking with him not the blood of goats and bull calves, but his own blood, having won an eternal redemption for us. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of heifer are sprinkled on those who have incurred defilement and they restore the holiness of their outward lives. How much more effectively the blood of Christ, who offered himself as the perfect sacrifice to God through the eternal spirit, can purify our inner self from dead actions so that we do our service to the living God. He brings a new covenant as the mediator, only so that the people who are called to an eternal inheritance may actually receive what was promised. His death took place to cancel the sins that infringed the earlier covenant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. <laughs> Alleluia. 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 I am the living bread which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia. The Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may worthily proclaim the Holy Gospel. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him and say to the owner of the house which he enters, the master says, where is my dining room in which I can eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room furnished with couches, all prepared. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as he had told them and prepared the Passover. And as they were eating, he took some bread and when he had said the blessing, he broke it and gave it to them. Take it, he said, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and when he had returned thanks, he gave it to them, and all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood, the blood of the covenant, which is to be poured out for many. I tell you solemnly, I shall not drink any more wine until the day I drink the new wine in the kingdom of God. After psalms had been sung, they left for the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Mark's Gospel reading this morning for this solemnity of the Most Holy Body and Blood of Christ, also known as Corpus Christi, takes us back to the upper room. Jesus is at table with his disciples the night before he dies. And we are reminded that the Eucharist that we share this morning is not just a simple remembrance of a past event when Jesus ate his last supper in the upper room with his friends. This moment in the upper room 
is a unique moment. More than anything else that he has done before, this is the moment which Jesus brings his person, his mission, and the whole salvation history of Israel into convergence. It is the moment totally saturated with God and God's loving action of liberation and salvation. Apart from anything else, this celebration shows us that the Eucharist always takes place under the shadow of the cross. It always commemorates Jesus' death and it always is a memorial of that sacrificial love which Jesus showed both during his life and his death. As followers of Christ, we are committing ourselves to a way of life which also has that self-sacrificing love at the center. If we're conscious of what we're doing, taking part in the Mass this morning and receiving communion during Mass will always have the effect of reinforcing the commitment on our part. All the sacraments, in their different ways, exert an influence on us. They're not just man-made rituals or human gestures or symbols that we've simply made up. They're points of contact with God that bring us closer to Him. Much, and they make us like Him and help us to share more closely with Him. And this is especially true of the Eucharist. Many of the other sacraments have a one-off character, baptism, confirmation, marriage. And if baptism is the great sacrament that brings us to life in Christ, the Mass or the Eucharist is the beating, living heart of the Church from which that life is nourished, refreshed, and renewed each day. The Eucharist is a sacrament that we are invited to take part in again and again during the course of our lives. The Eucharist celebration is the heart of everything, but it can never be separated from the washing of the feet. The two realities are linked, being at communion with Jesus so that we can be in communion with others in service. Pope Francis writes that the upper room speaks to us of service, of Jesus giving the disciples an example by washing their feet. Washing one another's feet signifies welcoming, accepting, loving one another. It means serving the poor, the sick, and the outcast, those whom I might find very difficult to deal with, or those who annoy us. The upper room reminds us through the Eucharist of sacrifice. In every Eucharistic celebration, Jesus offers himself for us to the Father so that we too can be united with him, offering to God our lives, our work, our joys, and our sorrows, offering everything as a spiritual sacrifice. The upper room also reminds us of friendship. No longer do I call you servants, said Jesus to the twelve, but I have called you friends. He took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and said, take, this is my body. The upper room reminds us of the teacher's farewell and his promise to return to his friends. And we are reminded of his promise in John's Gospel, chapter 14. When I go, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. The upper room also reminds us of pettiness, of curiosity. And so who is the traitor, we are asked. And it reminds us of betrayal, 
we ourselves, and not just others, can manifest those attitudes whenever we look at our brother or our sister with contempt, whenever we judge them. We should not come to Mass out of mere obligation. We should be sitting here this morning or participating online because the Eucharist celebration is an integral part of our life in Christ and communion with others. The celebration and reception of the Eucharist should be our strength, our joy, a commitment in faith and love that gives meaning to all our existence. We aren't Christians because we go to Mass, but we attend Mass because we are Christians, celebrating God's unbounded love for us and to participate in the action that follows of Christ having engaged in since the Lord walked the dusty roads of the Holy Land. I quote Deacon Les from his Come Home to the Eucharist reflection on Friday when he said, let us never tire of the overwhelming mystery and glory of Jesus offered to us in the Blessed Sacrament, and never let us grow lazy in our reverence when we are in the real presence of Christ. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus did not want to be forgotten. He did not want his life and all that it embraced for us to ever be forgotten. Throughout the world, we gather in millions each weekend and remember. We remember Jesus, his compassion, his life, his forgiveness, his teachings, his miracles, and his love. If we want a fresh start, starting place to begin, thinking about the body and blood of Christ, try this one. Jesus said, do this in memory of me. By receiving the body of Christ today in the Eucharist, we are remembering and we are asking for the nourishment and strength, indeed the very life of Jesus, to help us to do what he did, to offer us, to offer our lives as a gift to those we are called to serve. I invite you to join in reciting the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through his I believe in one holy Catholic and holy Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the restoration of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Through the new covenant that Christ sealed for us with his blood, we have an eternal bond of love with our Heavenly Father. And so we have the courage to place these prayers before him.
We pray for the church, the living body of Christ in the world. May it be a lasting sign of the strength of the new covenant between God and humanity that arose when Christ sacrificed his life for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the clergy, through whom we are privileged to experience at every Mass the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. And we pray especially for Father Harry as he celebrates his 70th birthday. May he and all the clergy continue to be richly blessed in their lives and work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our St. Michael's community, and particularly for those members who have not yet found themselves ready to return to Mass after the difficulties and disruptions of the past year. May they be drawn to experience once again the healing and redemptive power of the Eucharist. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those parts of the world that continue to be divided by religious, political and social conflict, and particularly for the Holy Land. May the healing hands of God touch every heart and help to create societies that can live in peace, tolerance, and mutual respect. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the success of our country's vaccination program and for an end to the hardships brought about by the pandemic. We pray particularly for the poor and for those who have lost loved ones and livelihoods over the past year. May the love of Christ touch their lives through the care and actions of our communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have died, especially Judy Hayworth, for whom this Mass is offered, may they be eternally united with Christ in God's heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Father, from ancient times to this day, you have kept your covenant with your people, caring for us and satisfying our every need. Knowing this, we ask you to hear and answer these prayers, which we make in the name of the risen and present Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Blessed to you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Let there be God our prayer. Lord, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The third Eucharistic prayer. You're indeed holy, Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
the mystery of faith. Save us, save us. Save us. the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the holy apostles, the glorious martyrs, Saint Michael, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm, in faith and charity, your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, to you, God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, is all honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a gesture of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to me. Amen. Amen. 
the blood of Christ. Amen. For those at home who could not receive physical communion this morning, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, and if you were as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you, never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. There are quite a number of notices in the bulletin this week. Please take a copy and check out all the notices. I'm only going to draw attention to one or two of them this morning. First about confessions on the last Saturday of the month, so that will be the 26th of this month from 9 to 9.30. A couple more details about that in the bulletin. Please check it out. And then... We are asking for those who want to join the RCIA and Alpha. More about Alpha perhaps next week. With regard to the RCIA, this is meant for those who are interested to know more about the Catholic faith. If Alpha looks at what does it mean to be a Christian, then the RCIA goes beyond that to what does it mean to be a Catholic Christian and emphasizes some of the things that make the church unique. The RCIA is meant for those who are adult Catholics and haven't yet received all the sacraments of initiation, are not yet confirmed, and this is a preparation for that for those who wish to become Catholic, but also for those who simply want to know more about the Catholic faith. There's a contact number there and an email address for Jill Greenwood, so please make use of that and suggest it to anybody you think who might be interested or could benefit from it. Over to Deacon Tony. Father Harry, it's my privilege on behalf of the parishioners of St. Michael's and the parish of St. Michael's to hand you this gift in appreciation of your 70th birthday. Thank you. Don't open it yet. <laughs> and of course not only is it a gift for your birthday but I think also a, as an, a sign of spiritual, of thanks for your spiritual guidance during your 21 years with us here at St. Michael's and also your priestly 45 years of service to the community of Cape Town at large. Thank you very much for everything that you've done. Thank God you. bless you. I'm deeply grateful for your generosity and your kindness to me. It's been a privilege and a joy to be here all these years, and may God spare me for some years to come. Indeed. Keep me in your prayers, and I will certainly always be praying for you and for those who are not with us this morning because of COVID. All are held in my prayer life and once again, I've already received numerous gifts from people over and above 
what might be in here. Um, but I will say thank you again next week because things are still happening. Let us pray. Yeah, we've got it. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Let us bow our heads and ask for God's blessing. Now may that peace of God which passes all our human understanding fill your minds and hearts with the knowledge and the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.